Well, hey, first of all, my name is Drew DeFore, and I'd like to thank Josh for bringing me in. This is really awesome. Um, I'm not anything spectacular. I, I'm very fortunate to have a career in music, and I have been a lot of places and met a lot of people and seen a lot of things and read a lot of books, and I'm just going to try to give you like everything I got here in this, you know, this awesome meeting we have going on. So the first thing I want to do is kind of, uh, you know, maybe give you guys a sort of framework for, uh, for I don't know, for, for where I'm coming from. And uh, I'll tell you a little bit about my story. I'm, uh, I'm just someone who's always loved music. I was born in a house that had a piano that was a decoration, and I just always played it. Um, in high school, I was the kid that learned the Beatles and Queen songs by ear and went to the musical crowd and like played along and just had everybody sing along and have fun. I always loved popular music. I've dabbled in jazz and classical. Um, what I want to say right now is, is it's really important to remove bias in any part of life. The best thing you can do in life, in relationships, and how you view politics and everything you do is try to remove bias. Because, oh, that's someone who might want to be coming in. But uh, to remove bias is kind of like the way that you can open yourself up to truth, which is how you can see things the best and get you know, the best decision in, the, in every well, situation. You know. So in the music industry in general, it's very important to, to know. You know, you can't, if you're in the business of music, you don't want to look down upon things that are simpler or not, you know, I, we're better than this, or like Radiohead's like so much better than like you know the early Beatles or something like that, and you, you start to realize that there's so many similarities because it's all just it's just good art, you know. It's just it's out there to move people. Um, you know, Bob Dylan changed the world with you know only two or three chords in some of his songs, but you know his focus maybe wasn't the music; it was the lyrics. Some people the focus is in the music; it's the theater of it. Some people it's not the music; it's the politics. Some people it's just the music, and so. In the music industry, you find that you can't separate those things. You know, I'm sure even you guys in the classical world or the jazz world, you look at music and you're thinking, oh, it's just the music, that's all that matters. But you're always influenced by what they're wearing and how they look and how they, how they talk when they're coming on the stage. I mean, it's literally the show starts when they walk into a theater. If there's a weird smell, it's going to affect how they view a performance. If you come on stage and you're stuttering or, or you, you, know, you, you, you walk on stage and you're like, what did you say, John, or something like that, and you're talking to your friend off stage, they're going to be like, confused and it's, it's all about you know you can't separate the senses and you can't separate what's happening so what music is essentially it's a very important trade it's a very important thing that you have and you know the people who say oh money is a terrible thing blah 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 it's not a terrible thing money is just totally a medium for all these exchanges to happen and I, I'm sure we all mostly have come to that conclusion but it's really confusing and confounding to me when musicians are like you know I don't do it for the money and it's like well no of course not but like you do it for the exchange you know of, of of everything, of love, of, of it's all an exchange. So what, you got to find your value. And so I can't talk about what that is for each of you because you have to figure that out. Are you a classical musician? Are you a songwriter? Are you a promoter? You know, are you um, a, 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 a jazz bassoonist? You know, like that's that's up to you to figure out what you're gonna have. And the only the only thing is, once you pick that, you're kind of like you're not stuck, but you really have to realize what that means. Diversify is hugely important, but um. Going back to booking, so it could be a cover band, dueling piano, string quartet, session musician, wedding band, orchestral performer, jazz musician, Irish music group, reggae band, jam band, circus performer. Um, all those people, they could either just be booking themselves into events wherever they might find a need, or they could have someone that really spends all their time booking that particular person into like these avenues. A booking agent, it's, it can be a really great thing. There's uh, in my world, dueling pianos. There's all these dueling piano bars, so. These bars don't really need a booking agent because it's all there's always just a guy there who's like the head player and he you know and if, if you're lucky like me I started 10 years ago and I've been networking I know 60 clubs and 300 players you call the club and say hey can you you got an opening for me and he's like oh yeah John wants to take a week off you know you come in and play here you know pick up a paycheck maybe go see your relatives in LA you know that's that's been really good for me but you don't need a booking agent for that one of the biggest things I can tell you is are you going to work for yourself you going to work for someone else um, starting your own label versus working for a music label there's pros and cons to each. Um, Ingrid Michaelson has her own label. She has a great manager. So the manager has placed her in movies and, and television shows and, and uh, commercials. Yeah. Uh, how difficult is that process? Because it, it's easier because of the internet, right? Because you can do like online. Absolutely. But I, as far as placement, you mean? Mm. Getting a booking agent. Getting a booking agent. It's no, I mean setting up a record label. Setting up a record label, okay, well that's a whole crazy discussion. I'll, I'll try to simplify it right now. Well, what would you need a record label for? There's so many ways you can collect uh, money off of music. Uh, little, littler and littler, smaller and smaller, the amount is coming from actual hard copy sales. That's actually 
becoming less and less what is like generating money. It's now about royalties, uh, ticket sales, merchandise. You're kind of like putting the music out there and kind of monetizing what's around it. That's been a huge theme in the, in the last you know five years. So for instance, your own label. What does that mean? So so you have a, you have an album. It's got ten songs, and you you know, do I want to sign this to a label? What will a label do for you? They're the owner. They own. They will say, well, we want eighty percent of your music for good reason because we're going to spend every day and we're going to promote that and make it as much money as we can. So that means they're going to they're going to hopefully if they're connected, they'll put your music on the radio. They'll put it um, on in movies, television. Uh, I mean, do you know, do you know, does everyone kind of know how real? Anyways, the point is, labels can be awesome. Labels can be really, really awesome. And, and, and I think it would be really hard for most people to have like their own label in that sense, unless they just had a manager that was essentially like, I don't think the musician, you would want to be doing all that necessarily, unless you were just totally like, yeah, I can spend 10 hours a day, you know, emailing people and trying to like get my stuff on radio and then making sure I audit all these companies. Because like uh, there's world, there's, there's companies that literally audit radio stations and you know, to, and they audit ASCAP to make sure the royalties are being per, uh, paid out correctly. It's extremely hard and extremely beautiful doing it yourself, owning your own business. It's figuring out how to survive in the world in an uncharted territory. You are not going down someone else's path, you are creating your own. You are the engine and the freight cards. Um, so here's some stories of like my DIY friends. So a couple who I didn't get a chance to speak to, they're really busy, but Joey Dosick, he was in my to just go. He's now uh, performing with LP, who's a new singer-songwriter in LA. It's actually really funny because I knew he was working with her, and uh, we were going to get our first TV to watch. We don't have cable, but we watch like, a lot of movies. So we were going to get a TV at Best Buy, um, and we were looking at the TVs, and like, you know they have promotional like, concert videos? We were looking around, and then like, there's Joey like, on Best Buy TV. Her promotional video is on TV at Best Buy. So um, he got that gig by moving to LA and just doing sessions and just being extremely connected in, in the LA scene. Matt Gerard's a friend of mine who does dueling pianos. He's from Kalamazoo. He was fifth place on American Idol and uh, like three or four years ago. This is a big deal um, to him. American Idol is a very interesting thing right now. It's, it's, you can, you, a lot of people can criticize it and there's a lot of validity to that. And he, he can verify that. But American Idol is like, it's Motown. It's, it's a vetting process that's super smart because they don't have the, guy, the 50 people at Motown going, we like this or not. They have all of America vetting their, their artists and their songs for them. It's genius. It's super simple and like maybe you're not moved by anything on it. I'm not really, I haven't seen a lot of stuff on it that I've really thought was great. I actually like the new uh, uh, the Philip Phillips song. Yeah. It's kind of cool, it's a beautiful song. But like the point is, what not whether you like it or not, it's just that it exists and it's, it's, the, it's the roses are red, violets are blue thing. If you can come to terms with American Idol, which is something that was hard for me, all of us are like, yeah, fuck that. It's like, this is just for like the masses, it's consumable, blah, blah, blah. But that's how everyone is because they want something more, which is fine, but also like, be cool with it. It's like, it is what it is. You know, like, it's, it's a vetting process for most people who aren't educated in music. So they might not, like, have ever even studied. I lived in uh, Gross Point. You know, I went to school in Detroit. I, I've been in Michigan for so long that I know, you know, Michigan people. So I've got some reach. But I've always felt weird, you know, when I'm talking about pulling your friends and family out to gigs. You just Can always... I actually... Yes, like, like, dovetail off this question? Yeah, because this is the question that's only, like, the, not other than to see you and hear you talk. I've, I've met Drew once or twice, is um, to ask this one question. <laughs> because I've been doing the singer-songwriter thing now for a little bit. I actually just quit my day job in, uh, I'm going to quit my job, January. So I've quit my job. So I've, I've been doing like nothing but music for income. And that's not as glamorous as it seems. There's some, <laughs> there's some really hard stuff. And like if my wife didn't have a good job and she wasn't on board, it'd be really, really tough. But what I've noticed that now, I've played the Ark twice, yes. played the Blind Pig a handful of times. I'm playing Top of the Park for the first time. That's awesome. Congratulations. I awesome. think this year. That's a great gig. Um, but I can only get like all of my friends and family, no matter how many friends and family I can get in Ann Arbor, Washington County, whatever, how many times can I get them to come out and pay exactly. 5, 10, 15 bucks to see me, hear songs that they already know I'm going to do? So my question is this is, I, you know, in, in, unless you do something like doing the pianos or like Lathal outside does, where you go play four or five different bars every week and play 95% covers every time, yeah. and it's going to keep people drinking and keep the club happy That's and how whatever. Play, uh, yeah, how but how do you go places where you don't already have a following? Great question. So, what I've been doing, and I only have one place, I have two places in the world where I've been successful 
and unfortunately they're out of the country. And I say unfortunately, it's it's not. Oh, excuse me, three upstate New York. I've done pretty well up there. Um, I have a booking agent that puts me in the places where people are already going to hear original music. And there's very few scenes in the world. There's just not that many scenes. A scene is where like there's a club, and a bunch of people are like, we want to see good new music. We're gonna go here, and a lot of people do either every night or every weekend, like Hotel Cafe in LA, or The Rockwood in New York. These are smaller venues that you could play, but I mean, you go there and there may not be a ton of people, but... The, and, yeah, you might not get any might gain money, but you start playing those places, and you, if you make a good impression on 10 people, maybe there'll be 20 next time. It's so intense. It's all, it's literally like, the music industry asks the same question. It's literally just like, yeah. anything you can do. Used to be flyering was enough. You can't just fly now. And then for a while, you thought Facebook invites would be enough. It's not enough. It's got to be like everything. But at the end of the day, it's like my friend Matt Gerard. Like, he did everything he could, and it was five to ten people. Then he got on American Idol. He was just in like the round of 100. He was in the, or like 30, and, and that was enough that he had to quit playing the place because he was too big for it. Mm -hmm. And it's so crazy because it's like, there's a difference between best-selling author and best-writing author. This is where you have to get real creative. Real creative, and like that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't have the answers either. Yeah, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm keep... Anyone needs to go to the camp. And if anything, they're down to answer questions for. Yeah, I'll come around in 15 minutes. Yeah. So. Okay. Sweet. Also, um, if you guys don't know me, I'm the president of Arts Enterprise, and Josh collaborated with me to have Drew come speak. So if you guys are interested in me on the email list, we're mostly a group of like music students and business school students, and we focus on like just any idea we have. We're really thinking of trying to put on like you guys I would use your input on this but put on like a show with student composers and student artists and kind of like a talent like just mix of That's students different types of mu yeah different types of music like sometime in the future oh thank you so much I had a lot of fun I hope I have you know good stuff that everyone can use and thank you for shooting that. <laughs> oh gosh. Are you heading out? I'm heading out. Okay, that's good. Um, part of my business was